Isaiah chapter 10. We're looking at here for four verses. A subject of lawmakers and judges. And I'm amazed that in 2021, new laws in 2020, the things that have become legalized. But the subject is lawmakers and judges. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. That's the first time decree shows up. What's an unrighteous decree? The sale of alcohol. The sale of a tobacco product where it is known to cause cancer. There are some states in the United States right now where not only is marijuana now legal for recreation. There's one of the states on the West Coast, I forget which one. Now hard drugs are legalized. Unrighteous decrees, laws. And that right grieving, grievingness which they have prescribed. Prescri a doctor prescribes a prescription. A lawmaker prescribes a law. And God's not writing about a law that, you know, you must drive 55, you must drive 65. And that there's a time, I, I live in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I, I posted it yesterday, and I think it's funny that there's a law on the books in Daytona Beach, Florida, that you're not allowed to spit on the sidewalks or the street. <laughs> Man, they enforced that one. But there are decrees in Isaiah's time, going Jeremiah's time, and even our time. There are laws being passed. They're unrighteous. There is, was, <laughs> on the records, there was a time when adultery used to be against the law. And you would have to do it in secret. You would have to do it in hiding. And if you were found out, you were actually put to a criminal court, not only a divorce court, for adultery. And yet you go on television and you go to the movie theater and it's in the books. Somebody's written that law off. You can write a law of unrighteousness or you can erase a law that, that prevented sins. And I think if the Lord tarries, there's going to be more and more laws erased off the records. They're going to allow more and more sin. Well, all these people get killed on the highways for, for drunk driving. It's don't say drink responsibility. Make it illegal. But then you lose tax dollars. Oh, yeah, for the love of money. To turn aside the needy from judgment. All right. so. There are laws being prescribed, verse 1 to verse 2. And they're writing the laws that there are needy people who have a need for a judgment. And the decrees that are being prescribed by the lawmakers, those that need the law rightfully, are not going to take care of it. Not going to take care of you. We've got a thing today with prescription medication. And then, oh, yeah, a year, two years, six months. We find, oh, you know, there's a serious side effect. Well, how come I can't sue them? I think personally, I think personally, this is personal. My own gripe and complaining. I don't think there's enough laws protecting tenants. I think that the renters, the, 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 the landlords have more laws protecting them. And these ridiculous leases today. But that's personal. 
There are people who have need of judgment. And the laws forbid them to get their judgment. How come the criminal in America who can't afford a lawyer gets a free public defender? And yet the person that has been the party and, and the victim of a crime, if they can't afford a lawyer, where is their, where is their defender? You have the right. Where's the rights of, of, the, of, the, of the victim? A woman who's been raped must testify before the court, but the raper doesn't have to say a word. And to take away the right, the right, I got rights, there it is. Hey, look, the world keeps up with the Bible. Uh, the rights from the poor of my people, Israel. There are rights. And the lawmakers and the judges are forbidding the rights of the people. And that's happening today in the Gentile in America, in the world. There are activities going on that I have a right to, but I can't or don't get the full privilege of because of the law. Protecting the guilty. That widows may be their prey. Prey, that's a word used for lions and tigers. And they go out and attack a sick. Listen, when lions and tigers attack a, a herd of animals, they'll sit there and watch that, that herd or that group of animals. And they will monitor the animal that is the oldest, the sickest, the weakest. And they won't mess with the healthy, great running uh, giraffe. They'll look at the giraffe that's old and weak and or young and stupid. And they'll attack that one. And to be the word that the word that the Holy Spirit said, pray is you have become under attack. By the lawmakers and by the judge. We're going, we're, you're a widower, you're weak. We're going to prey upon you and attack you. You wait till these people stand at judgment one day. And that they may rob the fatherless. That's the lawmakers and the judges. And the laws are being made and the laws are being kept and the laws are being to their advantage. I'll tell you one of the best things when I just before I left Connecticut, the biggest thing there was, was imminent domain. The government was snatching up property left and right for big business. And I'm not going to mention the big business that is now coming up with vaccines. And people were losing their houses and they were fighting. And they had signs. And the city came in, you can't put that signs on that property. But it's my property. You can't put those signs. You gotta take those signs down. And you got one little householder who has a business or working for a business, they're not making much money. And you got this corporate corporation with all these lawyers, and you got the greedy uh 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 Judges and lawmakers of the city and of the state who rather take care of the corporate business and then a little house owner. Well, guess who's going to lose in the end? And I could take you to that location right now and show you the house that's not there no longer. And I could show you all their plans did not happen as they wanted it to happen. Everybody lost. And what will ye do in the day of visitation? I, I know we call, uh, and it's wrong. We're going to go on visitation. You don't know what the word visitation means in the Bible. 
That visitation of God means, I'm angry. Here I come. It's a visitation against the lawmakers and judges that you've done wrong. What would you liken it to? You're in a courtroom. You're guilty. And here comes the judge. And he's going to nail you. His, uh, the recess is over. The jury's come in. And they have passed a guilty verdict. And Okay, here comes the visitation. The orders are being handed to the judge. The judge tells the bailiff or the, or the foreman of the jury, read your verdict. Day of visitation. And in the desolation which shall come from far. Babylon. Assyria. To whom will you flee for help? Where are you going to go to? You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to... These people, these widowers, the poor, and, and the father have been coming. Help me, help me, help me. Now here comes Assyria, and later on it would be Babylon for, for Judah. Now they're coming, and you're going to say, well, help me, help me. And the lawmakers, the judges, and God said, hey, be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That's why, listen, if you want mercy and grace from God, you better give mercy and grace to others. I, uh, listen, I have, there's somebody in my life, you know, they're just not right. I don't think some things are right. And, and when I pray, say, Lord, I, I want them to get right. I want them to be corrected. But Lord, you got to remember too, you know what? I'm a sinner. I can't be so harsh with him in his sins because, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, don't look at his sins and not look at my sins. No, we're both sinners. And where will you leave your glory? Huh? There are going to be lawmakers and judges who have swindled and dishonored and discredited and, and just churned the people that needed for a prey. And they're going to stand before the judge of all the earth, the righteous and holy judge, at the great white throne judgment. And they're going to say, what about mercy and grace? What about your mercy and grace? You better be careful. You better be careful on how you deal with others and then how you want God to deal with you. Without me, God, they shall bow down under the prisoners and they shall fall under the slain, the judges, the lawmakers, are not going to be able to handle up their load while, you know, the prisoners they put in jail, those that fell, the judges, lawmakers are going to get it worse in the time of visitation. For all this, his anger is not turned away. That's a fearful saying. But his hand is stretched out still. You know what that saying is? Oh, okay. We'll come to the end. Oh, no, I'm not at the end. You know, people are going to say uh, there are bowls, there are seals, and I think the seals are first. And they're going to say at the first seal, whew, it's done. Oh, no, no, no. There's a second seal. There's seven bowls. <laughs> seven trumpets. Oh, we, we got two trumpets now. Oh, no, we got three woes to go with it. Oh, here comes these bees, and they got these scorpion tail. They're, they're going to, to, to bite me or whatever you call it, and I'm going to die. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, they're excruciating pain. I'm going to climb to the highest building in the world, take the elevator up, and I'm going to dive off that building, and I'm going to hit the city straight. I'm going to be hit by a taxi or a bus, and then I'll, all my misery will be put away. Oh, no, it won't.
Can you imagine? Listen, it was tragic, and I, I would hate to use this example. But can you imagine 9 11, the World Trade Towers, and the event of the tribulation? I mean, there were people that died when those planes exploded. There were people that, that they showed, and it was bad, they showed those bodies falling out and hitting the city street, and they died before they even hit the streets. They say just fear and anxiety if you fell from like the Empire of State, but you would die before you hit the ground. This fear, anxiety. Can you imagine going through all that tragedy that happened in 9-11 and still not being able to die? You can say, oh, we're at the, no, you're not at the end. His anger is not turned away, but his hand, this is seven years. Seven years of tribulation. I know I'm, I'm going off in tribulation, but as far as this event right now, you know, Assyria is coming for, for Israel and Jude, uh, Babylon is coming for Judah. Listen, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come three times into Jerusalem. You think after the first time, whew, that was this. Oh, no, no, another time. Second time, oh, this has got to be. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, verses 5 to 19 is the Antichrist. The Syrian is a type of Antichrist. So, Nacarib. Oh, Assyria. Or Syrian, excuse me. That's the first time that word shows up. The rod. The rod. That's a, that's a chastening. It's used throughout the book of Proverbs for chasing your child. This, the, the Antichrist. You know, Psalm, was it, Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd. 32. I always forget what number it is. That, that's written to Israel. That's not written to the church age. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod of the devil. I mean, the rod of God is the devil. How on earth is the devil going to comfort Israel? Prophecy being fulfilled. <laughs> Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, and you got three, the Bible, if you read the Bible, we know there's three and a half more years. The rod of my anger, that's the chasing of Israel. My anger is the Assyrian. You know what the rod of God's anger today is COVID-19. I told you it ain't over yet. We're set six days into the new year, 2021. Everyone, everything's going to be great. And we just had an overthrow almost of the government in America. God is angry. And when you're looking at the time of Isaiah to Israel, and you're looking at the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, in the tribulation period, the Assyrian here, the Antichrist, God is angry. This is not the liberal God. This is not the God that's in the churches today. The fruity, telly, lovey, lovey, guppy, little God that walks around with lilies. No, our God has anger. Our God is holy. Our <coughs> Our God is right. And sin violates a holy and righteous God. The anger of God is hell. The staff, that's a, that's a, that's a tool of a shepherd. In their hand is my indignation. I will, God, what's the will of God? There are many wills of God in the Bible. Right now I'm going through the Bible marking them. I will, that's a will of God. I will send him the Assyrian against a hypocritical nation, Israel. Now if God is going to send Assyrian, let's, let's back away from the Antichrist for a moment. If God's going to send the Assyrian, the enemy against his people, 
What do you think God's going to do with nations against him? I know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to send the Assyrian, the Antichrist. And against the people of my wrath, Israel. The Jews. God's people. If God is sending anger and indignation and wrath against his people, for the judgment of God must begin in the house of God, what do you think is going to happen to the nations that are not of God and don't adhere to God? If God doesn't judge the heathen, ungodly nations, he will have to apologize to the people of Israel that we're reading about right now, and God's not going to apologize. If God's people are going to get it in the butt and they're going to get it in the butt, then the unsaved nations are going to get it in the butt. You can preach peace, peace, peace all you want. I, we'll see that in Isaiah. We'll see it in Jeremiah. But God says, I didn't send them. They're false prophets. Imagine that the people that fall off into a unpeaceful hell and torments forever listening to their Pope. I will give him a charge that's an order to take the spoil that happens after battle. When the battle's over, and one of the parties has fleed the battle scene. Then the winning occupation, the winning army comes in and they strip the sling. Ooh, that's a nice rifle you got there. You know, I, I watch, I don't know if I can say it, but I watch the, the, the Pawn Stars. It's a reality show. And I learn a lot about the swords and, and weapons. They, they People come in and they pawn. And they say, you know, like the swords, this was gotten on in World War II or or in uh, Vietnam, they would they would grab these swords from the dead soldiers they they fought. That's the spoil. My grandpa got this when he was in World War II in Germany. My grandpa got this when you know when when they fought on the island nations in the Pacific. My grandpa got this in in, in England. He got this when he fought Vietnam. That's the spoil. I, I one of my bosses was a Vietnam vet, and he would show me the you know the stuff he brought home. That's the spoil. And to take the prey. There's that word again. If, if you're out in the battle, right, and and you killed an enemy, and and, the, and come in, and here's a dead soldier on the ground, right. And, and you check out, well, he's got a knife. He's got bullets. Hey, I can use those. They're the same as my gun. And you, you uh, hey, he's got money. <laughs> Ooh, I can use that. And you check his, his canteen. Wow, he's got, he's got meat. And he's got bread. And he's got a water canteen. That's mine. And after a battle, some soldiers would sit back and they would, would they dine on what the food they found. Many times in the Civil War, the South and the in the North, they would when they conquer an area, the trains and wagons, they would take the food, they would take the cattle, they would take the and they, it's ours now. To tread them. You know, and today we got to don't tread on me. Tread is the, is the clobber, is the run over. Tread them down like the mire in the streets. Run them over. How be it? He, the Assyrian, needeth not so. Neither does his heart think so. He's unaware of what he's doing. You know what the Antichrist is again? I'm doing all to the glory of the devil. And God's up in heaven. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm punishing my people. Thank you very much. 
God thought he was, I mean, God, the, the devil thought he was destroying Job, and God's like, nope. At the end of Job, I finally got that man to profess he's self-righteous. I had to use the devil to do it, but I got him right. See, God uses the devil for God's advantage, and the devil thinks, <laughs> the devil doesn't know all. And so here the Assyrian, here the Antichrist, he, he doesn't even know what he's doing. He, he's fulfilling God's work. Now, let's say, for instance, and I don't want to talk about but let's just say, for instance, Dem Democrat, not, not one man, but let's say Democrat of America. Let's say that is the road to the, to the Antichrist. Let's, I don't, okay. Most of our government right now is Democrat, I believe. Let's say that is the road to the to Antichrist, socialism. Because socialism is going to lead you to the Antichrist. And the devil's like, hey, great victory for me in America. God's like, nope, you're just sitting back. Oh, and then my, 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 my ruler, the Antichrist, is, yeah, and then once the seven years is over, the Antichrist and the beast are going to go into the lake of fire. You're going to go locked up for a thousand years and we're going to... And I'm going to send Jesus Christ, and we're going to set up the throne. We're going to set up the millennial kingdom, and, and everything's going to be hunky-dory and great and wonderful. And the devil's like, you know, the devil's thinking about here and now. But it's in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, plural, not a few. Anybody in the tribulation period who does not take that mark, you're dead. Shanakra is coming. I'll conquer anybody. You get in my way, I'm conquering you. That was Genghis Khan. I believe it was Genghis Khan. He, 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 would, he would have his men outside of an area in a circle or... And they come in and come in and come in and come in and come in. And anything in that circle, man, they just wiped out. They don't care what it was. Until they came to center point of that city or that place, they had their minds out. I don't care who's in it. If it was live and moving, it was dead. And if it had any value, it's theirs. For he, the Syrian, I mean, yeah, the Syrian, Sennacherib, saith, this is what he's saying, are not my princes, his, his leaders, altogether kings? Or, you know, look how great we are. Is not Kino captured cities as Charcasus? I mean, look at all these victories I've got. And look at all the cities and people ahead of me. I conquered that city. I'll conquer that one. That's what he's saying. I don't know all these locations and all that. But hey, that city's done. We finished that city. That one there, the one coming up, we'll take care of it. It's not Hamath as Apod. It's not Samaria. All right. There it is. He's going to attack Assyria. That's Israel. Wasn't that like the attack Damascus? We tack Damascus, we can do Samaria. See the pride? Do you see America in this? Look how great we are from sea to shiny sea. You morons called an ocean. You don't even know. You're dumb. As my hand, that's Sennacherib. And the Antichrist has found the kingdoms of idols. Genesis 10.10, 10, Nimrod, Babylon, Assyria. Don't tell me, go back, you're wrong for running Christmas and Easter back to Babylon. Now it goes back to Nimrod, Tammuz, Esther. Is not my hand have found the kingdoms of idol? That's Sennacherib. That's as if it was talk about idol nation, my nation. What is the idol of the Antichrist? That image 
of the beast. What was the idol of Ephesus? Great Diana. What is the idols of the church? Silver and gold and Easter eggs. That all goes back to Babylon. That all goes back to Egypt. That all goes back to Babylonia. Whose graven images did he excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria? You know what he's saying? God's nation, God's people have got idols and images, and I've got more. You know what he's saying? All the gods that Jerusalem and Samaria have, I've got more gods. And my gods will conquer your gods. That's what he's saying. Jeremiah is going to say at one point, there, there are as many gods or places of worship as the streets of Jerusalem. How likely is that in 2021? I can take you a drive to Daytona Beach. I'll show you places where there's all kinds of churches, all kinds of denominations, and no denomination. As many as the streets in Daytona Beach, there's some kind of place of worship. Nothing new under the sun. Isaiah and Jeremiah should be read right now and in 2021. But what kind of stuff are the churches, the ones that are open? What kind of stuff are they looking at? What kind of stuff are they reading? And studying correctly. I must add correctly. Shall I not, this is a Syrian, the Sennacherib, the Antichrist, as I've done in Samaria and her idols and do into Jerusalem and her idols? No, you're not. Uh, Babylon will do that. God's going to put an end to Assyria and, and Sennacherib long before he even... I mean, Sennacherib may get a little touch, but he ain't going to get a big touch. Wherefore, it shall come to pass that when the Lord, capital L, has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, that's the southern kingdom, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king. All right, the king of Syria is coming to Jerusalem. God's like, that'd be it. Down, boy, that's enough. Now you're in my hands. At the end of the seven years of the tribulation period. All right. All right, Antichrist. You're done. And the Antichrist and the false prophet end up in the lake of fire at the end of seven years. Isn't my God great? He said, well, why is this all going on, Sennacherib and Andy? Because his people have misbehaved. And a misbehaved child, Hebrews 12. 11 or 12 or 13 says, as a father corrects his child, so I correct them that I love. Man, this is a quite a bit of a, of a correction. So Sennacherib, the Antichrist, is going to come in Jerusalem, but for Sennacherib and, and the Assyrians, that'll be the end. And the glory of his high looks, pride. Now, God is going to record the words of the Assyrian. For he saith, God's going to quote the Assyrian, Sennacherib. By the strength of my hand. Does that not sound like America? Was that the England, the nation that, where the sun never set upon the British Empire? You can't say that today. The Japanese, the land of the rising sun. You can't say that no more. Alexander the Great, I'm going to conquer more. Then you stop. Germany, I'm going to keep. Then you stop. I have done it. I mean, this is this is America, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. No, you're not. <laughs> you liar. If you're prudent, you would obey God and fear God. 
I have removed the bounds of the people. True. Yes. And I have robbed their treasures. True. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. True. Isn't this like the devil? True, 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 true. <laughs> and my hand has found as a nest the riches of the people. Pride. And as one gathereth eggs that are left, you know, get all the eggs, have I gathered all the earth. Well, not what today is North America, Central America, and South America, and not even the known earth. But same talk about Alexander the Great. And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or beat. No one stood against me. That's what he's saying. That's what the Antichrist is going to say. That's what America says. America thinks, even, you know, we lost Vietnam. We lost Korea. But we're a great nation. No, you lost. We just got out of it before we got our butt kicked even further. We don't even know why we were there. Here's God speaking. Shall the axe boast itself against the hewith therewith? No, in other words, God saying to, to Sennacherib. Here's a lumberjack. He's sitting down, taking a break, having a sandwich. And the axe is over there against the tree, and the axe is talking to the lumber. Didn't I do a great job? Look at all the trees I chopped down. And that, the lumberjack's like, really? <laughs> Let's see you come over here and walk over here right now, Mr. Axe. Come on, walk over here. Come over here on your own power. Shall the saw, you know, cutting wood, magnify against him that's shaking it? I mean, the saw. Here. He's in the wood shop. Again, here the carpenter, he's taking a break. And the saw's over there. Look at all that wood I cut today. The carpenter puts the sandwich down. Well, yeah, come on. Walk over here right now. Or go ahead, cut more. You know, you see all those trees over there? You see all that lumber over there? I'm going to have my sandwich. I'm going to have my, my soda and my coffee. You cut that lumber while I'm on break. God is saying that axe. Sennacherib. The saw. Sennacherib. The axe. The Antichrist. The saw, the antichrist, they don't even be called the battle axe. God says, you couldn't do nothing unless you were in my hand. Remember Job 1 and 2? Satan couldn't do nothing unless God said, okay, go ahead, do it. But don't do that. All right, do it. But don't do that. You know, the devil is powerful, but in the in, in the power of the devil, he's limited by what God wants him to do. And the devil is in the hand of God. And the devil will never get anything more accomplished for him than what God said. Okay, that's it. You're done. Listen, if, if God would give the devil all liberty to do what he wants with Israel, Israel would have been wiped off of the map countless times over and over. He could have wiped off Israel off the map. All right, fine. Sarah, never have a baby. Can't have a Jewish nation with just Abraham. What if Laban told Jacob, all right, you can go back home. You leave the children and wives here. As if the rod, there's that rod again, verse 5, should shake itself against them that lift it up. I'm not, can you, I mean, this is, this is gross and perfect. But, you know, you use a rod on your children, you should. You imagine your children are sitting there. And the rod talks. I mean, if if animals can talk in cartoon land, I guess 
I can, can you imagine that Rod's talking to the children how how many times I, I got you across the butt? <laughs> you imagine it? And the children look at it like, well, you know, if dad or mom didn't hold you, you wouldn't do nothing. You know, the children look at that Rod like, you know, you're a good Rod sitting over there in the corner. But when do the children feel that fear that Rod? When it's in the hand of dad. I remember my daughter. I mean, I use a rod. That, that rod would be there. No problems. Everything great and wonderful. As soon as I pick up that rod, she'll start crying. I, mean, I haven't even done nothing yet. What are you crying for? And that's Bible. <laughs> she didn't start crying until the rod got in the hand. She could play with the rod. She could grab the rod, play with it, color it, and all that. It ain't, she ain't going to. Or as the staff, there's the staff, verse 5, would lift itself as it were, no wood, you know. So the Antichrist, Sennacherib, the Assyrian, has come up to the place like, without God, I'm everything. And friend, let me tell you, that's Donald Trump. That's an American guy today. I call it, you know, a... Uh, uh, Pride goes before a fall, a lofty spirit. The guy said, well, yeah, that, that Bible verse is great, but why did you put Donald Trump's name to it? Because that guy is lofty, that guy is prideful, and he's gotten his fall. He didn't even want to fall. Up to yesterday, he was not going to conceive the office. You want to see, listen, Donald Trump is a, he is not the Antichrist. The Donald Trump is a tootsie roll compared to what the antichrist is. the antichrist we got to get rid of that guy oh no you're not going to get rid of me the antichrist is going to be a tyrant one world ruler nobody anybody opposes him <laughs> therefore shall the lord the lord of hosts god Send his fat ones, 2 Kings 19. Imagine God talking about that one. He's calling them fat. I forget what the word, you don't call them fat, you call them uh, um, upsies, upsies. God says fat. God says fat ones lean. You know what? I'm going to make you lean. I'll, I'll put you on a diet. Under his glory, God's glory, he shall kindle a burning like a burning of a fire. Not fire, but like a fire. Don't ask. I have no idea. And the light of Israel. Who's the light of Israel, according to John chapter 1? Jesus Christ. Who is going to conquer? Listen, Jesus Christ did not conquer Sennacherib. We're now Second Advent. We don't have time. Times is really going. But when you run, run to Revelation chapter 19, is there not a fire coming out of Jesus? And the sword? And the light of Israel, Jesus Christ, John chapter 3, shall be a fire. And his holy one for a flame. Our God's a consuming fire, Hebrews. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day, in that day. That's the second advent. The second advent. There it is. There's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. I don't read the Old Testament. Well, you just missed Jesus. Concentrating too much on the birthday of Jesus and not the second coming of Jesus. He shall consume the glory of his forests and of his fruit, fruitful field, both soul and body. And it shall be as when a standard barrier, a flag carrier, fainteth. <laughs> the battle's over. 
the flag has fallen to the ground. You know that the, that the book of Revelation tells us that one third of the trees are going to burn. How much is one third of the trees? And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few. And a child may write them. A child. What's that? A child's going to be able to go and count every single tree. That's how many a third of the trees are going to be burned in the tribulation period. That's how many trees are going to be left at the point that Jesus comes before he removes that curse with that flame. And we'll go over Revelation chapter 19. We'll go there. Revelation 19. Because I know many of you will not go. You're lazy. You won't study. So I'll do it for you. Revelation 19, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on it was called Faithful and True, and, and Righteous, he does judge and make war. So that's a Jehovah Witness. His eyes were as, as, like Isaiah said, a flame of fire. Not, not a flame of fire, as, didn't, didn't Isaiah say like? I said, don't ask me. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And then the rest of it on is, is the conquering. I think, let me check this one. Revelation 1, 14. Jesus Christ again. How come I haven't seen the pictures of Jesus Christ like this? The Italian. With the fiery eyes. His head. And his hairs were white as wool. That's what the church did to Jesus. The black raven hairs turned to white. Listen. My mom's got any gray hair. White hairs. It's because of me. To my sin and shame. As white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. That's the angry Jesus just before we get talking about the churches. Yeah. 